Okay, welcome back. Yes, Virgin Islands International Chess, and we're back to the much-anticipated game of round seven between Michael Smith and his opponent, um, Cleofis from Mr. Cleofis from uh, Tanzania. That was in round seven. And in this game, uh, Michael had the black pieces, and his opponent from Tanzania on board two, I believe, played the move e4. Michael played d6, uh, d4, and now e5. D takes on e5. D takes on e5, queen takes on d8, check, king takes on d8. And it's actually not that big of a deal, guys. And let's see why after knight to f3 and knight to c6. And it's actually okay. Um, uh, it's not really the end of the world for Michael's king there on d8, okay? So bishop to c4 was played. Michael just plays king to e8, no problem. Knight to c3 played from his opponent. And bishop to b4. Bishop to b4 is a nice move. Now we have uh, bishop to d2, just guarding there. And knight from uh, g to e7, played by Michael. And I really like this move a lot. I really like um, bishop from g to e7. I think it's a cool move. Knight b5, uh, played from Michael's opponent. And Michael played bishop to d6. Okay, just defending now the pawn. Okay, so knight to g5 now played by Michael's opponent. And after knight to g5, he played bishop to e6. Bishop captures e6, f captures e6, and knight captures um, on e6, and king to d7, okay? And the move uh, knight takes on g7, and bishop to c5 was played, okay? So this is a really interesting position. Um, I've never seen a position like this before. This may have happened to me a couple times online, actually. It does bring back a couple memories. But this, so far, in this 13-move game, guys, um, Michael um, is not doing any worse here. Okay, He actually has a lot of moves, uh, and this middle game is going to show that because it gets very complicated here um, for the rest of the game. This game lasted about 45, 43 moves and let's see why. Let's continue with long castles here um, in this position on move 14, okay? Rook from A to G8 was played by Michael, and I really like that move a lot. Now comes um, Bishop to uh, H6. Okay, so we have Rook from A to G8, and now the move is Bishop to H H6. Oh, yes, haha, bishop to h6. And, I, and I, I like this move a lot, by the way, too, guys, okay? King to c8 played, okay, immediately by Michael. And now f3, just backing up the uh, e4 pawn, okay? And a6, right, played by Michael in this position. Knight to c3 played by his opponent. Sorry for slowing down there, guys. I had to catch up with the moves. Um, now knight to d4. And I really like knight to d4. I think that's the best move in the position played by Michael. I really like it. Um, knight to d5 played from his opponent. And knight captures on d5. E captures on d5. And uh, bishop to f8. And I like bishop to f8. I think that's a really super move. Um, and in this position, c3 was played. Michael captured here on f3, which is hilarious too. Uh, if you capture here uh, with the G pawn, I'll, sh I'll show you guys what happens in a later line. Knight captures on F3. So his opponent went for it. G captures on F3. And now uh, bishop to G7. Bishop to G7. Rook to G7. And this is what was played in the game. Now rook from uh, H to E1 was played. Rook to uh, E8 now, which is the best move. Excellent defending and staying in the game as well and staying hyperactive. Uh, rook to e3 was next. And after rook to e3, we saw king to d7, king to c2, uh, king to d6. Yes, walking the kings now, both sides of the game. We see rook to uh, d2 here. Rook from uh, g to e7, now doubling up on the e-file. And b3. And rook f8 now. Michael attacking the other pawn. Uh, a4 played in this position from white, which is probably not the best move. B5 is coming. Interesting. A5, okay. A little fencing there on the side of the board with those side pawns. 
Rook to f4 now played from black. And I like this move a lot from Michael, guys. I think this is a special play. Let's see why Rook to f4 was so effective uh, after b4. So pushing all those pawns there now on the queen side of the board. And this is pretty cool stuff. Okay, so b4 now played from white. Rook e to f7. And now doubling up on the f file. So now Michael is completely committed to the F file, whereas before, guys, he was committed to the E file. We see how he did that, right? How he maneuvered those rooks and then doubled from one file and then doubled to the next file, right? Interesting stuff. Rook from E to F7, and the game continued with rook from uh, D to D3, uh, doubling up now on a column, uh, not a file. And rook to G7 was played from Michael. We saw rook to E2. And rook from uh, g to f7 again, okay? Rook from uh, e to e3, moving back again, repeating moves. But now just comes h5, right? King to d2 and h4, okay? King to e2, very nice. And now comes h3 from Michael. So Michael just insists on keep walking that hairy pawn up the board and through the ladder, through the hoops and shoots and whistles, huh? This is interesting h3 guys okay rook e4 now from white rook e4 rook e4 was rook e4 the move that was played in the game h3 played from black and then rook e4 yes was played from white okay just making sure i'm looking at the notes here rook to g7 now allowing the captures so to speak not really uh king e3 uh white played the move king e3 yes and rook from g to uh, f7 again okay always rook from g to f7 for michael in this game rook takes on f4 and rook takes on f4 king to e2 and rook to f7 okay King to e3 was played, and after king to e3, we saw rook to f4. Now rook to d2, and rook to uh, c4, right? So very interesting how Michael is maneuvering this f rook. I've never seen so much rook maneuvering in my life but this is some really special stuff guys wow i if you're if you're tuning in and keeping on through this whole video you know that's really awesome that you guys are doing that right rook to d3 now defending the pawn um michael yet again goes uh after rook to c4 and rook to d3 he goes back to f4 again okay and now we saw um king to e2 moving backwards again a lot of repeating of moves rook to f7 and king to e3 again, and rook to f4, king to f2, and finally now e4. All of that for e4. Wow, that was interesting. I think they repeated moves there. I don't know. I, I would like a ruling on this. <laughs> king to e3, um, e takes, uh, e takes on d3, right, was played. And that was where White resigned in the game, guys. So White blundered uh, the D3 rook. <laughs> and that is going to be a resigns. And Michael, wow. <laughs> I want to go over where Michael repeated that position like three or four times. Yo, that was like really interesting. Like, oh man, what the heck? Like pushing the H pawn and keeping the, you know, those pawns there. Not the pawns, but the rooks. Um, I want to go back. So many rook maneuvers here. It's like the whole entire middle game to the end game was just like rook maneuvers from Michael. And it was just like, maybe we need to learn from his rook maneuvers. You know what? Let's start off from the beginning of the game, right, guys? And let's just kind of go over this quickly in like a blitz fashion. We're almost 10 minutes into this game. But, you know, I love Michael. love his games. We've played against each other. We're good friends. And uh, let's show his game. Uh, Again, here quickly. So we went for d6. And again, just this caveman tactics with this queen takes, king takes, going back to e8 now. It's almost like a bong cloud opening, but not, you know, taking with the king or whatever the case is. And that opening, yeah, king e8. 
Knight c3. I haven't seen a bomb cloud in a while, actually. I should look that up. Bishop to b4 now, bishop to d2, knight from g to e7, knight b5. Dropping back to bishop, knight g5, bishop e6. Giving up a pawn and then giving up another pawn here. And then maybe it looks like white is completely winning. White has like so many pawns. There's like no queens on the board, blah, blah, blah. So funny, right? Bishop c5, long casuals, rook from a to g8. And the fun is only beginning because like we could just stop here after knight to c3 and the whole bishop h6 maneuver that like we're going to see <laughs> his bishop end up dropping back to f8 and just a whole bunch of rook maneuvers for like 10 or 20 moves it felt like like towards the end game until he got his opponent to blunder a full piece so <laughs> and then like insta resign so let's go through that now guys okay after knight c3 this is really fun knight d4 knight, knight d5 knight d5 e d5 Here's that bishop f8 now we were talking about, and c3. <laughs> Michael goes for knight captures on f3. It's so funny. I, I laugh as hard each time I see it. Because after gf3, which is played, bishop takes, bishop takes, and you're, you know, everything is secure. Everything's taken care of. You know, you're only down, like, one pawn. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like rook from, eight, rook from h to e1 and rook to e8 immediately. It's <laughs> so funny. King to d7 and king to c2, king d6, rook d2, rook, rook e7, b3, and watch all these rook maneuvers now from Michael. A knight, rook f8, b5, right, a5, right, rook f4 is just so nice, b4, rook from e to f7, rook d, d3, and look at what white's doing now. They're just cat and mouse with each other. It was so funny. Those one little rook maneuvers, like beep, beep, each, that was so funny, right? h3. Yeah, rook e4, rook g7, and king e3, and rook gf7. These were all the moves played in the game, by the way. Rook captures on f4, finally, but no, and not recapturing with the pawn here, right? That's not what Michael wanted, because that allows the king to get forward, right? So not allowing that, right? Just capturing with the rook, but then king e2, and uh, going backwards, and king coming up, and rook f4, rook d2, now going after the c-pawn. But Michael just saying, I can go back to the F file and go back to F7 and then move up again and then play this E4 move and King E3. His opponent must have just missed like this whole attack on the rook and went forward. And that was going to be it. E captures on D. This was the notes from the game. And this is the exactly what happened in the game. So his opponent uh, knew he just blundered, messed up. What's funny here is that uh, better than... Let's just say you play the, the right move in the position, right? You obviously can't capture with the pawn here, right? So what you do is, is you just move the rook over one time, right? And then this, th this game can like go on for a little while. It's going to give Michael that free d5 pawn. And Michael has like all kinds of liberties now to like expand here, right? That's not a good move because king takes is also available, right? So white's going to have to come up with something in this position. He might just have to move his king again. And black is just so much stronger in this endgame because these black pieces here are so much better. Um, everything's working out in this rook and pawn endgame for Michael, whichever way you look at it, guys. And that was the only win of round seven against Tanzania, and that was Michael's game. And he had the black pieces, and that was just a really cool game to look at those rook maneuvers. And I'd never seen so much of that. It almost looked like to me, to the naked eye even, guys, that it was like a repeat of positions, but it wasn't. Uh, it was just different move orders and different sequences of moves that actually appeared that they looked similar, but they weren't. It was kind of like repeated once or twice, but not really uh, three times for it to be perpetual. All right, guys, let's take care. Um, this was a really awesome game to, to show, and we're going to be using it, Michael, for educational purposes uh, online and with classes as well. Okay, thank you guys. Take care, and bye-bye for now. Thank you guys for doing such an awesome job. And see everyone on the other side of the chessboard with much more to come in the future. Okay, guys. Good night.